presented by GMH, Gillette and the Swan Brewery. It's the chance for the Cats and the West Coast Eagles to open their winning account for 89 as they slog it out at Cadinia Park. Both teams had their colours lowered last week in surprise results. Geelong by a kick and a thriller against North, while the Eagles led Essendon back into a game they looked to have in their keeping. Rival coaches Malcolm Blight and John Todd have a lot at stake this afternoon as they try to erase the memories of last week. It's Sunday afternoon live in round two of the VFL. And a very good afternoon everyone from Cadinia Park in Geelong and welcome to round two of the Victorian Football League Geelong versus the West Coast Eagles. A vital game for both sides certainly. The Cats going down last week by only two points to North Melbourne in a thriller. A game they could have won. On the other hand, the West Coast Eagles got away brilliantly against Essendon and faded before the Bombers won that match by 16 points. And so today, a vital game for both teams. The crowd at Cadinia Park, as you can note out here already, very, very vocal indeed. It's not a capacity crowd, but certainly in excess of 20,000. Both teams out onto the ground doing their warm-ups now. And let's look at the respective captains and coaches for today's game. Malcolm Blight, of course, the new coach at Geelong, and John Todd coach of the West Coast Eagles, Damien Burke, the captain for Geelong, and the newly elected captain of the West Coast Eagles is, of course, Murray Rance. The teams, as they were selected on Thursday night, line up like this, and Geelong have made two changes from the side that went down to North Melbourne last week. Coming into the lineup will be Damien Burke and the Cats number one draft choice from East Fremantle, Ray Sterrett. They replaced Tim Burke and the former Fitzroy player, Hinckley. The West Coast Eagles stung into action after their defeat by Essendon and they have made four changes to the side that went down to the Bombers at the Wacker under lights last Friday week. Let's take a look at some of the players we'll be keeping our eye on, the informed players going into round In three. recent seasons, Geelong has gained enormous drive from prolific kick winner Paul Couch. His lightning dashes out of the centre and his left foot passing have been a delight to watch. And fortunately for Cat fans, Couch has started this season again in top form. One man he often finds on the chest is centre-half forward Barry Stoneham. An underrated player in the past, Stoneham is now a key player in the Geelong forward line. When it comes to big man strength, no one gives more for his club than Dwayne Russell. The former South Australian always strives for 110%, whether in defence or attack. One player Geelong will have to watch closely is Eagles forward Phil Scott, whose bag of seven goals against Essendon was the highlight of the Eagles' performance. New skipper Murray Rance will be keen to make amends for the Eagles' poor start to the season, and his duel with Barry Stoneham should be an absorbing one. And gutsy rover John Anir will have to work hard to curb the dominance of the Geelong Little Men. Now these two sides have only played three times, and currently the record stands two to the Eagles and one to the Cats. Well, one of those toss-up days, it's either going to buck it down all be perfect and for my flu I hope it's going to be perfect if we can check the Holden thermometer just 21 degrees here at Cadinia Park right now and checking the forecast they say it will be a cool and cloudy day with the occasional shower humidity 77 percent the expected maximum and we've hit it 21 degrees all right, thank you, Dixie. Dixie Marshall will be keeping us up to date with the on-ground and dressing room activity during the match. And, of course, we'll also be keeping you up to date with progress scores from the big game at Carrara this afternoon between Brisbane and Sydney. At this stage, it's a very good afternoon to my co-commentators, Peter McKenna and Ross Glendinning. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Pete. Peter, how are you? Ross, it looks like maybe one change out there for the Eagles. Bremen was doing uh, a warm-up. Is he going to play? Yes, he, he'll play. Adrian Barrett uh, was selected in the paper side. He uh, won't be playing today, and Todd Bremen has come in replace of Adrian Barrage. And while you're there, Ross, your selection? Well, uh, I think uh, Geelong, Peter and I were talking about before, that uh, Geelong desperately need to win, as obviously the Eagles do. However, uh, Geelong, Cadinia Park, uh, it is a very much a ground that does have a home advantage. Even though the Eagles won here last year, they'll be hard-pressed to lift their form. Very tight game, and uh, whilst I could favour the Eagles, Geelong looked very strong. Peter McKenna? Well, I agree with uh, Ross. I, I don't want to give him a big head, Pete, but I really don't believe that they've covered Ross Glendinning on the forward line. They're trying Peter Sumik uh, today there at full forward, but the games that I've seen in the Panasonic Cup matches and also last week, I don't 
really think that they have good key forwards at the moment. Speaking of key forwards, Bill Brownless is a player we're going to watch because last week apparently he got in a position to take about Malcolm Blight said in the paper 100 marks. Might have been an exaggeration, but he only grabbed a few. Yes, he managed to uh, get his hands on quite a few last week and just built them and it ended up being fairly crucial, I thought, in that game be, uh, with the one-kick difference as it turned out and uh, that did cost them, I think, but uh, hopefully Brown's got his hands on a few today for Geelong's sake. First quarter from Cadinia Park. Geelong and the West Coast Eagles, the wind probably going right to left. Keane got the first tap out. Going through very solidly was Troy. And diving on top of it for the Cats is Denham. And also on there, number 32 is Gary Hockey. It's going to be a bounce just wide of the centre circle. Up high was Burke. Burke, of course, was injured in the Panasonic Cup match. That was McCrabb getting boot to ball to knock it out of the centre. Up towards the centre field area, Keane plays it off to McKenna. And the market take it on centre wing for the catch by Russell, who decides to play on directly. Not a good kick. The idea was right, and once again, McKenna doing the tidying up work. Sweeping hand pass taken by Lockyer in front of Brownless, and he goes for the long kick towards the outer side. Malaxos, who was expected to get the captaincy for the West Coast Eagles, can't grab it, it's out of bounds. Well, Lockyer will make a big difference into that side too, because he can be played at either end of the ground, full forward or full back. There's Burke. Keane actually came over the top and the big hit away towards centre wing. This is Turley onto the left foot. He's gone to half forward. A lovely pass that found Worsfold. Worsfold, centre of the ground to Malaxos. Further ahead to Anir. He can't break the tackle. He's under enormous pressure. It's the ball punched away by Darren Troy right out towards the boundary line. And in fact, it beats all the players over the line. Well, it's about 60 metres around from the Eagles' goal. There's Chris Mainwaring on screen. First couple of goals, very, very vital. O'Connell gets it down to Main wearing a clever hand pass to Turley. He straightens up, fires towards the pocket. Here's a chance. Sumik was over the back. Hart's there also. Now he keeps it in play. He's caught. And uh, the umpire said the ball was over the line. It'll be a throw in deep in that forward pocket. And of course, that's in the Eagles' forward pocket. No scorers yet. We see Schultz doing the ruck work. He taps it down to Denham. Denham a quick kick towards halfback. This is Bearstow, a former Sam Groper himself, as he kicks long, a beautiful kick. Looking down for Brownless, who's playing well out from goal. This is Morgan, Darren Morgan. So he gets it to Burke. Damien Burke, plenty of time to line up and kick long to half forward. Cameron in front. It's tapped over the back. Malaxos in front. Breaks away, he's got the loose man out wide in main wearing, and he should mark this on half back, and he does. Which he does, the defensive 50 metre line. You can't mistake that photo with the blonde locks. Not too long, that's Langdon. In towards Laurie Keane. He's arguably the longest kick of a football in the competition. Won't be able to prove him right or wrong that time. He's gone for a short pass, that's Pike with it. Up towards full forward, gee, that was just about a mark. Knocked away at the last minute by Ablett to Denham. He lobs it up towards midfield. Big fist away attempted by Burke and or Keane. That's beautifully done from Bairstow onto Russell. On a couch. A knock on. Scott well caught by Mainwaring and that's holding the ball. <laughs> that's pretty red hot that is. <laughs> Didn't give him much chance at all but a great tackle done on this by Mainwaring. The Eagles will be looking to him for a good year. Strong mark taken by the skipper Rance. Russell stands the mark. Rance short of left centre wing. Played, of course, formerly in the VFL with Footscray. Yates certainly missed what he should have taken. Worsfold, did he get one in the back? Might get a free kick out of it. Which he will do with left half forward flank and goes short. And the mark has been grabbed by Hart in front of Yates. Peter, you were saying as we came up the stairs, this is a long ground, a long kick, the order of the day. Very much like the Subiaco ground, this one in size. Now, did Schultz touch that? He'll rush it through for one behind, and that's the first score of the game. And it came up with 21 minutes left in the opening term. So both sides, if I could use the terminology, filling each other out. Not a bad crowd in attendance. That's a good kick. Burke, great grab. As he was injured when he collided with Steve O'Dwyer. He had a centre bounce in the Panasonic Cup. Covered badly bruised ribs. Ablett. Up to half forward. Not the longest kick from Ablett, and he can kick it a country mile. McKenna threw it. Nothing for that, says the umpire. Getting dragged down. It looked like it was Brennan. The Cats... 
battling it forward. Morgan's kick is high. It's a floater. It's a goal. Great shot. Wind advantage to that end. There's Denham. Quick kick towards half foot. A good mark taken down low by Murray Rance. As Peter said before, the captain of the Eagles this year. He's gone wide. Malaxos, who a lot of people felt was going to be captain. But a terrific uh, try, Steve Malaxos. Brings it to half foot. All oh, the players are up. A good mark to Sumi. He's putting his body in front of the pack now. He's going long to Langdon. Langdon's made the lead. He's out in front. Now let's see what he can do. He'll probably swing around onto the left. Oh. He Now he does. He was grabbed high. It's a wobbly old kick to the pocket. A chance for a mark. Phil Scott couldn't get back. And it beats him over the line. But uh, he's a bit of a wobbly kick, uh, Langdon. Yes, he needs Ross. to tidy that part of his game up. Uh, he could have been far more effective with a, a need to drop punt. Well, he had plenty of time to get away onto his left foot there. There's Schultz against Phil Scott. Now Scott cleverly gets it down. Denham. Oh, then Yates, in fact, it was. Back it came to Schultz. Schultz towards half back and a nice mark is taken there by Damien Burke moving very, very well. Onto the left foot. He's gone long. Over the back. It's a good mark to the former Essendon and Footscray player Shane Ellis. Now, Ellis is at half back. He brings it to Turley, who's un... Well, there's no one on him there. And... Uh, not a lot of pressure on him. Turley towards half forward. Up they go again. Oh, Sumik's looking quite good down there at full forward. There's worst fold to Hart. Hart will straighten up. An open goal. 30 metres out. Bang. And I think he's flipped the centre with that one. He has. It was a good play there from Peter Sumich to set that up. He's leading very well, getting to the front of the pack. And contesting that mark. Brought the ball to ground. Johnny Worst for a very quick left-hand handball to David Hart. Running with the fly of the ball. And a good kick for goal is David Hart. And he had time to turn and onto his favoured right foot. Didn't miss. So the Eagles first goal coming up to David Hart and the Eagles now leading by one point. Mr. Geelong favoured by a very, very slight breeze in the opening term. Certainly nothing to speak of. That's the observation looking at the windsock on the outer side. Hart's first goal. The Eagles by a point. Knocked down by Denham. Picked up for the catch by Gary Hocking. He's delivered it up towards right half forward flank. The ball has to be punched away by Brownless. And the Eagles will be content to let the ball go over. And pushing the back to McKenna against Brownless. And the upshot of that could be dangerous, but it won't be. Ellis takes the mark just up from the back pocket. Turley inside the defensive 50. Anir. Langdon. Mark, free kick, whatever. Could be 50, Pete. It is against Austin McCrabb for the obvious and they were red hot on those yesterday at Barabin if you transgressed at all it was 50 metres I reckon he took him back 35 I was going to say that's not quite 50 metres yeah, so I don't think I'll be buying real estate from him that's uh, Peter Carey Langdon 55 out ball hits the deck nobody can take it Scott's in there so to his boss no one making much headway it's a free kick going Geelong's way and it'll be taken by Schultz in the last line of defence Cats lacking any real stars in defence I guess they haven't had one down there since the departure and retirement of Gary Malarkey oh, that was a nice old elbow Mainwaring comes out of it beautifully was grabbed when not in possession <laughs> by Yates and he's done it well to get the free kick. He made sure the umpire saw him then, Ross. My word. So, main wearing, as you can see, right on the 50-metre line. On this longish Cadinia Park ground. Win not a factor. That's a beautiful kick, and it just hit the top of the post for one behind. The Eagles leading by two points. Well, an unlucky... Uh Unlucky kick. There was a beautiful drop punt, as you called it, but just didn't swing back enough. Now, Schultz bringing it out wide. He finds Steve Hocking in the back pocket. Almost to that 50-metre line on the half-back line, in fact. Now, Malaxos, the disciplined play there as he gets it to Pike. Pike runs to half-forward. Beautifully directed kick out in front. Now, this looks like Sumik charging after it. It is. Now he swings onto the left foot. Good play by Sumik to set it up for the high flyers. Let's see if they can take the mark. They can't. Hart can't get in the hand pass. Pike went in. Now it's Yates. Yates gets it out of defence, but it's all the Eagles out there. They had four players to raffle it. Charging after it is Brennan. 
Brendan. Oh, who was that one too? Oh. I think it was meant for Turley, but he is a bad hand pass. Turley's good enough to go. His handball oh. straight to Burke. Burke to Russell. And this has left Geelong in. Russell's gone wide with the it's meant for Brownless. Brownless loses it to Lockyer. Lockyer will probably look for McKenna. Now he's hooking it back on the left foot. He's got two men to kick it to. One is Rance. Oh, Rance didn't see the Geelong man coming. Very slow thinking there by Rance. As we see Russell to Couch. And Couch breaks the tackle and kicks long. But, well, he's gone wide and through for one behind. But some ordinary play there by a couple both, of players. Both teams. Right? Yeah, some errors there. And the ground actually a little more simply than what it may look. Had some heavy rain here Wednesday. Malcolm Blight was saying that the midweek was very sloppy here. So players uh, should have the right footwear on today. So 1-1 one, one to 1-2 one, in favour of the visitors. Lockyer goes to the outer side. Plenty of distance in that kick. Bearstow rose it well at the back. Turley on his hammer, and that might be a triple holding the man. Because the latter is paid by the umpire. And Turley's not going to get the ball. Bearstow's going to have to retrieve it himself. Discarded the mouth guard pretty quickly when he found out the free went against him. I don't think he liked it. So Bearstow, many options open to him there. Looks for distance with the kick. The big punch away from Keane finds him near, arguably in the back. On the end of a hand pass is Russell. Hooks it across the body and towards the forward pocket. And it bounces through for one behind to level the scores. And big crowd down there behind the outer goal. Looking for the Cats' first win of the season. Lockyer comes out wide and finds Main wearing in front of Scott. Is he off Peter McCann? Yes, he was, the umpire said, but a good presence of mind then to chip pass it across to Malaxos is in everything so far. Very highly skilled team, the Eagles. They'll appreciate the wide open spaces of this Cadinia Park ground. Couch to Yates. Yates under pressure, a quick kick towards half forward. It's all Eagles. Oh, three of them. Went for it, and a very good mark in front to Main Wearing. It was a strong mark because he had uh, contests from his teammates. Well, he's gone to McKenna. McKenna struck. Oh, his teammate slipped over. This could let in Bearstow. It has. He's got an open goal. Straightens up Bearstow and has hit the pass. So that's one apiece. And uh, as Ross said earlier, that slippery ground. Good example there, Peter. Quite right. And it looked as if David Hart does have model old boots on. Yes, I'll uh, find out it's a little bit. Spongy underfoot. I was talking to George Clark, the head trainer, before the match got underway, and he said there was a lot of rain here on Wednesday night. Out of bounds, close to centre wing, still on Geelong's attacking side of the centre. Of course, we've seen this ground in a lot worse condition than this. It's pretty good for football if you've got the right stops on. Damien Burke wearing those protective thigh pads up against Laurie Keane, who wins it. Looks for and finds Hart. Good hand pass, Ania, oh, he got decked after he kicked that, but nothing for it. Malaxos, a oh, beautiful block by Bearstow, Langdon in possession, tackled McCrabb, ball spills free, and Langdon has come out with the free kick. Not appreciated by Geelong supporters. Carl Langdon looking for leads, none forthcoming. Every man is covered down there. The option would appear to be to go long. Which he didn't do. Hocking got one across the chops. Picked up by Mark Boss. Relays it to Morgan. The Cats' only goal kicker so far. Morgan sees Burke sprinting for it. And the skipper playing a pretty good game today. Back in the side after injury. Laurie Keane. No threat to any store gift aspirants, certainly. Russell. Looping hand pass over the top. Chance for the Cats through Den and the two Rovers were there. That wasn't 10 metres, was it? Mark has been paid to uh, to Ellis. He's gone for the short pass. Pike in board. And Malaxos, Peter McKenna starting well. Yes, and uh, well, he normally gets plenty of possessions. Malaxos seems to be playing up around the centre area somewhere. Oh, there's a mark. No, O'Connell couldn't quite hang on to it. That's two he's dropped. The free kick to Geelong for holding the man. And this will be Austin McCrabb. Two pretty evenly, uh, well, they're very even sides, I would suggest, these two. Uh, as I said, the ground will suit the Eagles. Look at that kick, a 65-metre kick. Rance punches it away. He's doing well on Stoneham. Stoneham has got it, though. Rance, oh, he's got him. Good play by Rance. That allows Dean Turner to 
chip in and hook it back O'Connell in front position. Punched away by Yates. In goes Anir from centre wing. Oh, cleverly anticipated then by uh, Stoneham towards half forward and Russell. Brennan's got the job on him, the quick kick. Down to Brownless. He's in front. Mockyer over the back. Taps it forward. Here's a chance for little Denham. Denham to Couch. An open goal there for the Cats. Couch fires and misses. So another behind on the board to Geelong. They move on to 1-4. The West Coast Eagles on 1-2. Well, the Eagles pressuring them, Ross. Yes, they are. Poor Couch is having a fine season so far, uh, Peter. As is Dwayne Russell. He kicked four goals last week on that half-forward line. Pike had to play on. Long kick would have been perhaps the better option there. And near, always a good player. Good competitor to John Anir. He can stay clear of shoulder injuries. Ablett, not a mark, but a free kick for on the shoulder. Gary Ablett this year by Malcolm Blight, preferred in defence. Now it's going to Yates. And Gary Ablett actually playing centre half back today. Hocking in the centre. Takes it in front of Langdon. He's gone out wide. Now to half forward. Tries to find Brownless, who is well covered. Lockyer. Bearstow in front. Turner. Couch. Close to the boundary line. Hugged by the Eagles. Hocking. Clashes with Malaxos. It's out of bounds on centre wing. So boundary throw in. Neither side really able to get an early break so far. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the opening term. Burke. Shaping up as a good battle in the ruck between Burke and Keane. Hocking grabs it. Right centre wing for the Cats. Distance with the kick. Inside 50. Oh, strong Mark Russell. Uncontested, really. Good pair of hands, Ross. Yeah, very, very good pair of hands and very strong in body, particularly in the legs. He holds his ground very, very well. And for a fellow that size, can also get in the air. Now he's a long way out from goal. He's gone back about 25 metres at least. So he'll be kicking from probably round about the 50 metre mark. Low trajectory. Now uh, Brownless has marked it, or is it a score? No, it's a, it's a behind. And things becoming a little bit heated down there in the goal square. Obviously he didn't complete the mark before the ball crossed the line. And so Bill will have to give the ball up. 1-5 to 1-2. Lost opportunities in the first quarter. Well, Billy will have a tough job today because Lockyer is a real goer, and uh, this player's got terrific skill too. Don Pike has gone to half. Oh, poor old Johnny Worsfold with nearly the meat and the sandwich. That's McCrab getting it to Yates. Yates straight down the centre. Ranch in front. Oh, stone him over the top. But McKenna is a brilliant player down there in defence. He's just got terrific anticipation. Back to Lockyer. That was dangerous though. He's caught, and this could be costly. Picked off the ground by Denham. And over the line, maybe at times Guy McKenna tries to handle a little bit too much. Yes, that uh, has been a criticism of his play, but he, he is such a fine kick, both left and right foot, and uh, could handle less, be more effective with a kick. Well, it's about 35 metres around from the Geelong goal. Burke over the top to Morgan. Morgan swings onto the left foot as he kicked his second goal. That's a great-looking kick. It's a goal. 2-17 plays eight at Cadinia Park. Geelong after a slow start early. They've got their game going now. Looping hand pass by Russell. Doesn't quite find the mark. And the Eagles, ooh, May wearing cock one. He wore it pretty well. Malaxos drives them forward. Not for very long. And the mark is taken by Yates. He's been a solid defender for the Cats for quite a few years now after missing a whole season with uh, an Achilles injury. Three kicks to Geelong. We're in the back. It'll go to Damien Burke as Turley was breaking away with the ball. Plenty of distance in that kick too by Burke. He can kick it a long way. Scott or Main wearing. No, they can pick it up. Scott's on the bottom of the pack trying to scoop it out. Morgan comes up with it. And the umpire has plucked the free kick out for Pike. Which he will take inside defensive 50. Wide to McKenna. In front of Bearstow. Warsfold on the wing. Marking in front of Yates. Looking for options. None there. Decide to have distance with the kick in front. McCrabb went up one-handed and made it look an easy mark, but he's paid a free kick to the Eagles. Shepherding yeah, shepherding it was, Peter, against David O'Connell. Again, looks for distance with the kick. Well, that could have been almost in the back. Knocked away by Mark Boss. Pike again, looking dangerous. Turley has a snapshot, and that's gone pretty close, and the umpire says full points. 
well, it's better work from the West Coast Eagles and Craig Turley kicking on his left foot, a natural right foot kick, and a very deliberate shot of goal there from Craig Turley. It brings them uh, back into the contest, and that's their most positive move so far. Well, three points the difference. And uh, young Pike, number one, Don Pike is in brilliant form for the Eagles. He's in everything, as is Malaxos. 17 plays 14. This is a good start by the Eagles. Slight breeze going Geelong's end. That was Denham down towards looking for Morgan. Here's Johnny Anir waiting over the back. Oh, that was gutsy play by Anir. Determined play, but it's gone straight to David Cameron. He's tried to hook it back. Brownless should mark this. Now, it might have been over the line. The boundary umpire was about 50 metres around. I don't think you could have seen that anyway. Now, Brownless is right on the line. You get the distance, Peter. is a great oh, kick. One of the longest kicks in the, in the game, Billy Brownless. But this will be a miraculous goal if he can kick it from there. She's right on the boundary line. This is close. It's through. Bunts, Morgan 2 and Brownless 1. The goal kickers for the home side. Sean Denham has come up with the ball. It's a Geelong free kick. I don't know whether it's uh, Denham's. No, it's not. It's going to stone him. He's got his hands full with the Eagles captain at uh, the moment. Down towards half forward. Three of them missed it. No one comes up with it. Knock on by Cameron. It's a scramble right on 50. And it will be a bounce. Yeah, but there's no doubt that uh, all forwards, particularly full forwards, like to get a goal early. They don't get one on the first quarter. They start to worry the next one's coming from. <laughs> Experience speaking. No doubt about that. I've got two of them here to contend with. And that was a high tackle on Russell, surely. And Wayne Russell will take the free kick. About 55 to 60 metres out from goal. He's definitely a quicker player this year, Pete. As he must have thinned down a little bit, perhaps. That's a beautiful spiral punt. Magnificent kick distance-wise. Morgan for goal number three, and he's got it. a perfect opportunity for the young kids watching today's football particularly rovers ruck rovers the front of a pack from a congested area the ball is generally punched forward we really do uh, defenders try and punch to the side or have the ability to do so in a very tight situation and morgan very much in the right spot there as you can see on the replay and a fairly simple goal really in the end kevin bartlett was a master of that wasn't he yes, yes he was it's just been the right spot it's not difficult but you just got to force yourself to get there well, 15 points the difference in favour of Geelong, and they're running Morgan on and off the ball. He's now back in the centre. Guy McKenna's down there with no one on him at the moment. There's Morgan actually gets it out of the centre with a bit of a dust up behind the play between Scott and Burke. It's at half forward for Geelong. Bearstow after it. McKenna and uh, also Turner with him. And eventually it's forced to the line. It's Dean Turner, in fact, uh, is tagging Mark Bearstow. Well, he's got a big job, uh, Dean Turner, although he does that job pretty well. Bearstow, prolific uh, possession getter normally. And uh, the Geelong supporters were delighted that they talked him into staying this year. I'm, I'm certain. There's Hart. Uh, he's lost it to Couch. Couch going long. A beautiful kick. Lockyer and Brownless. Lockyer over the back. Beautifully done by the fullback. He's gone wide to main wearing. He's lost it to Denham. Denham brushes the tackle, hooks it back, and puts it through for a point. But Andrew Lockyer's handball there, he wanted to go longer. And just a slight mistiming and got, got his hand underneath the ball and it went in the air and lollied a bit. And put uh, Mainwaring under a bit of pressure there and they only got to go of that too long. Well, ten shots to four at the moment. Uh, the Cats getting on top. It's only 16 points and I really do think they're kicking the ball about ten metres further down the end that Geelong is kicking to. His guy, McKenna, can be a little bit loose at times. His skills are unquestioned. He's gone wide to Dean Turner, but they haven't gained a lot out of that. Turner on the left foot under pressure. Oh, diving attempt was by Troy. Now it's Bearstow to Denham. To half forward, it's tapped away towards Couch. Couch is caught, loses it. Oh, Pike, well done. Oh, good desperate play by Don Pike. Was desperate play, and uh, now with the free kick. Seven kicks to Pike and one hand pass plus four marks. He's done pretty well. And the Eagles going across the ground like the Leyland brothers here. Main wearing. Not it goes to Turley, who's kicked one goal so far in this term. Cameron. Good tackle, Langdon. Ball spills free. Knock on by McCrabb. Onto Scott. Close to the boundary line. Hocking. Can he gather it? No, says the boundary umpire, who was right on the spot on that occasion. 
and the throw-in will take place left half forward flank for Geelong. As you mentioned earlier, Peter, that ground finding out the Eagles players, they're just finessing just a bit too much, and then he passed just slightly off target. The players are losing their feet and can't make up that ground lost. This is certainly a lot softer than it would have been last week after the rain that fell uh, midweek. Turley goes for the boundary line. That's the look at out of bounds. Oh, and a they played a couple of those yesterday at Windy Hill. I think it's about time they paid them. If they're uh, considered deliberate, that's not a bad shot. It's one behind by Paul Couch. And the Cats missing a few up there. That's four goals, uh, seven. Four, seven. Eleven shots to four. But as we mentioned, Geelong kicking with the advantage of this slight breeze. It's a long ground. You can't afford to waste a kick on it. can drag that one down it's almost a trip to Cameron in fact that's how the umpire has seen it he decides to play on the advantage rule and chips it in short good mark taken by Couch always an elusive player and he's a pretty good kick of the football Paul Couch a lot of skills it's the breeze behind him 55 out it's underneath it a little bit the breeze does the rest it's a goal Leave this by Geelong, and the Eagles will have to get a move on because the Cats looking dangerous. There's Denham down towards Morgan again. Over the back is Couch. He's gone for the hand pass. Billy Brown is with the two. Oh, he's lost it. Oh, golden opportunity. Lockyer. Well, oh, gets out of trouble to a near and near to Ellis, and Ellis coming away from the half back line. That could have been another one to Geelong. There's O'Connell wrestling with Ablett. Gates. They really are falling down up on the forward line. The handball by McCrabb to Ablett. Over to Scott. And they're teaming well Geelong. Scott to Morgan. No, it's not. It's Hocking. Gary Hocking. He's run into all sorts of trouble. That's the head. That's holding the ball. Oh, oh too high. high. She was lucky to get away with that one. I'll well, say he, he was. hold it for a fair time, but in the end... He got a he high was, one right at the end. He did get a high one, yes. Well, hit lucky, but still the free kicks there as we see Gary Hocking from centre wing. Kicking it long, looking for Brownless. Lockyer at the back. Pike held when he didn't have the ball. The umpire on the blind side. There's Scott to Denham. Now it's Cameron off the ground. Back goes Lockyer. He should force this one through. Oh, he did the wrong thing. Lockyer it's allowed Cameron to go off the ground. No, it might have been a free kick in the meantime for the Eagles. Let's have a look. Yes, it's Lockyer's free kick, is it? Might be going the other way. Or is it going Geelong's way? Which way is he looking? He was looking no. as if it was going to be a Geelong <laughs> kick. I don't think it is, though. But I think it's uh, Andrew Locks. I still think he should have forced it through. Yes, I think he tried. He's just a little bit casual there. Well, Andrew Lockyer, yeah, under enormous pressure, that uh, eagle defence. Oh, bad kick. Straight to Damien Burke. He could kick this. That'll be the last quick uh, kick of the quarter, Peter. Well, we have three sec two seconds. In fact, the siren's about to go. There it is. Now, the mark, he will have to kick from 50 metres. He's not the greatest kick in the world, Damien Burke. Let's see if he can get on to one. He's kicking with the breeze right on the 50-metre line. Oh, gee. A long kick, but I think he's hooked it. And one point goes on the board. So the Eagles breathe a sigh of relief. And a quarter time here at Cadinia Park. Geelong lead 5-8, 38 to the West Coast Eagles. 2-2, two, two, a total of 14. And footy facts as we check round one of last year, the West Coast Eagles scored their first ever win against Geelong with a 21 point victory here at Cadinia Park. The Eagles won both clashes in 88, taking out the return match in Perth by 20 points and now lead 2 1 in the head to head battles with the Cats. Cadinia Park, Geelong 5 8, the West Coast Eagles 2 2. Morgan has three goals for the Cats, Couch one and Groundless one, and for the Eagles. Turley won and Hart also has one goal. Geelong's high flyer Bill Brownless is one of the VFL's most spectacular marks and with his long accurate kicking can excite any football lover. Brownless joined the Cats from Gerildery and at 22 years of age forms an important part of Geelong's dangerous forward line, a unit which is one of the most talented in the league. He suffered from injury last year but in his fourth season, the fair-haired Brownless is sure to improve. Welcome back to Cadinia Park. Players taking up their positions for the start of the second term. Dixie Marshall. 
he jumped on went absolutely berserk and it was the delivery of the ball which copped most of the mouthful he said there's got to be more direct less casual they just can't afford to go short in the back line as for Mal Black fairly content Yes. Thank you, Dixie. Yes, I think most uh, of us up here would concur with not going direct, Peter. Well, I think uh, Ross might be able to answer this. I really think they've got problems up in the key forward positions with their delivery and also the type of player. Yes, there uh, is four fairly tall players, all with less recovery. 38 to 14 as we begin the second quarter. A good quarter for Geelong. The Eagles have the win this term. Russell grabbed. Did he have it? The umpire says no. Dwayne Russell's free midfield. Long kick. Well, plenty of distance with that, so maybe the wind isn't that much of a factor. Lockyer goes for the hand pass. Certainly a hurried one. Dean Turner got one at the back for his trouble. He'll take the free kick for the Eagles at the left halfback flank. Of course, formerly in the VFL, played for Fitzroy for a couple of seasons. Langdon chips in beautifully from left centre wing. The spoil effective from Yates. At midfield, Main wearing fumbles. He doesn't do that very often. On the pike, he was their leading kick getter in the first quarter. Bearstow at centre field. Now he can kick long. Spears the pass down, looking for Brown as he can't take it. And a good mark taken by by uh, Guy McKenna, <laughs> who goes short again to Pike, who's bobbing up everywhere. It's about his seventh or eighth kick so far. He's taken six marks. Ablett knocks it down gathered again by Russell shaping up as one of Geelong's best players yes and uh, the kick lock is doing well on Brownless down there oh my guy McKenna's slipped over it's allowed Couch to have a kick at the goals but under pressure on his opposite foot he's put it out of bounds on the fall just to finish off very quickly what I was going to say pre the uh, game starting the second quarter Eagles a bit top heavy in that uh, forward line and lacking the recovery when the ball hits the ground which is doing more often than not well, here's Johnny Anir doing a lot of work in defence today. Keen, they really need him to take over. He's got a tough job on Damien Burke, who started off particularly well in that first quarter. Keen didn't do much. Now, the torpedo punt. Steve Hockey in front. Oh, O'Connell not holding his marks. It's his first game back, and, uh, well, Turley's got one in the back. Umpire Russo right on the scene there. And saw that one from side on. Craig Turley... From centre wing, has kicked long. Worst foul, good use of the body. Now, it's worst foul free. He was grabbed. He used his body beautifully. Then uh, Yates grabbed him. Now they need a couple of quick goals, the Eagles, to get themselves back in the game. Johnny Worst foul, a terrific goer. Now he's about 70 metres out from goal. He's kicked a high floater. They need someone to take a mark here. Up they go. Main wearing crashed in after it. Now it's Pike charging through the pack and umpire Russo will bounce it right in front of the Eagles goal. The moment they trail by four goals, 24 points. Scott still in front. Here's a chance. Langdon crashes in on top of McCrabb, but he got into his back and Austin McCrabb will take the free kick. In the goal square is McCrabb, Geelong halfback flanker. Transfers play to the member stand side. The target is Adlett. He doesn't let it down. Taking the mark in front of O'Connell. And the 50 metre penalty. Well, I don't know what that was for. He got me. I really don't think that was 50 metres, then. Well, they've uh, started to pay them at the start of the season. They're going to try and be consistent with it. He was uh, unnecessary to see on replay was, there. I guess he was dragged down, but. They certainly wouldn't have played it last year, Peter, would they? No. Man in front is Murray Rance. Eagles captain at centre half back. He's freshening just a little. Hocking in front. Went for the knock on, knocked it over the back. There's Pike again. There's a Geelong free kick. There's David O'Connell infringing over the shoulder and going for that mark. Number 50, Number 50 is it? Now, this will be certainly advantageous to Geelong. Let's see where he brings him this time. He'll be kicking from round about the 50 metre mark. Well, that's longer than the other 50 yeah. we saw in the first quarter from the same position. Different umpire, though. Different umpire, that's right. I don't mind the 50 metre penalty, but it's too severe for a lot of the minor infringements that they must give it for, that they normally give 15 metres for in the past. Yeah, and that's where, the, that's where the vega is. It's just, uh, it's too severe. Hocking. That looks pretty close. Golden Pie doesn't have to move. Four points to the Cats. 
Russell screws it across the body. It rebounds to Turner. Now it's gone to... Uh, it'll come to Scott now. He can pick it up. The bounce is not going to favour him. Yes, it does. Ultimately, we look for a hand pass. He's got Bairstow on the run. Bairstow looking for Brownless up in front. Lockyer at the back. Mainwaring supporting him. Brownless onto the left foot. And the snap shot is there. Well, that's exactly what Bill Brownless must do with his play. Particularly if uh, going for marks and screen there. But recovery on the ground and kicking more goals. Not just from marks, but from general play. And here he got front position. the right thing to do. That's a little high than infringement, but played on. And good recovery. And on his left foot, good result, Peter. Well, there was two on one there, so the Eagles really had no excuse. There no. was Lockyer and Main. I thought Main Waring could have helped Lockyer out a little bit more then. Yes, and the Eagles making a change. Dean Laidley on the ground and Dean Turner off. Well, they have to do something. Geelong are right on top. Laidley, there he is. Scott, or oh, Geelong are looking good. Troy to Scott to Stoneham. And away they come again. The quick hand passes to Russell. He's at half forward. He's hooks it back. And a nice mark taken in defence. Lockyer actually doing all right at fullback. He's gone wide to main wearing. He in turn goes wide again to Malaxos. Now, let's see what Steve Malaxos can do. Terrific play. He punches it 30 metres forward. Pike is in front. But here comes Geelong. Oh, ducking the head was Couch. Play on to the umpire as Hocking gets it to Bearstow. Wide to Ablett. Ablett might run down and have a shot here. Gary Ablett, 50 metres out. Lines up the ball. What a brilliant goal. A valuable one for the Cats against the Breeze. Scooped out by Ania. The Eagles not going forward, though. That'll be a Geelong free kick for a high tackle to Paul Couch. So John Todd has a few problems at the moment. Unless they pick up, they could cop an awful hiding here today, Pete. Darren the Troy. Yes, the Cats, if they get on top, can be pretty hard to stop. Yates. Goes for a pass. It's a badly directed one. And an easy mark to Guy McKenna. Just up from the back pocket. Play on is the call. He stepped over the mark. Has to go for a hurried hand pass. It's taken by Brennan. In towards midfield. And the mark is taken for the Eagles by O'Connell. O'Connell to half forward. Oh. Ineffective play. That knocked away by Sumich. Hart might get there first for the Eagles. He does. Not much support for him. Scooped up by Hocking. On the couch again. He's along through Mark Boss now. Morgan, who kicked three goals in the first quarter. Couch again, covering plenty of territory and plenty of targets up there too. A mark to Dwayne Russell, who's been a magnificent player today. Russell, long, the half forward. The rebound headed out towards Bairstow. Brennan. Back it comes to Russell again. He's knocked up getting kicks. Brownless the target. Lockyer the spoil. Hocking onto his left foot. Hooks it across the body. And it's another one. That's his second this quarter. Well, Peter, Geelong are looking very sharp. Next with their confidence is up because they led it that uh, quarter time break by 24 points. They look very keen. They're more aggressive than what they were last week. Their skills are quite good. They're finding their play with their disposal and their goal shooting. Whilst a little strain their first quarter has been very, very good in this quarter. Well, it's 17 scoring shots to four. I think that says it all. And uh, when uh, the Eagles get to their forward zone, they don't look confident at all. Keen has lowered his colours so far to Burke and a Burke again. Russell looks terrific. Geez, picked up some pace. Detroit, and again they bulldoze the ball forward. Turley pushes his man off the ball. Here's uh, Brownless. Back it comes to Morgan. Morgan looking for Troy. Now he elects to dummy. Go the short pass. And a lovely pass finds Bearstow about 35 metres out, slight angle. And that's what they weren't doing last week. They're more confident, more, more purposeful. I think they received a bit of a jolt last week, Ross. Well, if they didn't realise what uh, situation they put themselves in, uh, well, they weren't going to get much better this year. Bearstow for the 10th goal. Oh, it's, it looks pretty good. Yes, it's right. Corey King had a fresh air shot. Troy, hand pass that goes astray, getting ridden into the ground was Cameron. And the ball hustled towards the boundary line. It'll go across it in the middle of the interchange area. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very short stint on the bench to Warsfold. I think he wanted the ball in, Pete. Just slightly. A few teammates can follow suit, perhaps, Peter. Keen does get that one out. Pike, who's been their best player, should get a free kick. 
five marks, eight kicks and one hand pass to Don Pike. But they haven't had too many goers so far in the match, although it is early days. But the scoreboard, 10-8 to 2-2, is, I think, a pretty fair indication of the play. Pike from left centre wing. Mark Boss gets underneath it a little bit. Now the umpire has found a free kick. It'll go to Sumich. What, which, sort of, uh, what sort of kick is he, Ross? He's a, he's a pretty good kick. He's a very long kick. Now he'll be kicking from outside the 50 metre mark. The Eagles yet to score a goal this quarter. In fact, they've yet to score in this quarter. He runs out, tries to draw it back. Like a Greg Norman three iron, but it doesn't work. And the Eagles have got to find something pretty quickly. Keane and Burke. They've had a great deal so far with Burke on top. That was a pretty solid collision. Yeah. And Malaxos, the last to get up. He's okay, so too is Darren Troy. And they both went in particularly hard then. I think that hurts Steve too, but he's trying not to show it. You never try, never show it, do you? Hart and Ablett. Malaxos to Langdon. From a standing start, that looks pretty good from here and a valuable goal to the Eagles, their first this quarter. Yes, and a uh, great example there from Steve Malaxos, as he always does every week. Doesn't matter where the ball is and what's coming toward him. He always puts head down and backside up, and it's a great contest there. And he was the one in the end from that bounce and they got the ball out. To Langdon, who this time is far more accurate than some of his other shots at goal. Well, they certainly need three or four more quick ones. They're well out of the game at the moment. 3-2 to 10-8. That's uh, seven goals, six. So virtually eight goals. Well, there's uh, Langdon charging in on Troy. Now, Troy hooks it out, but it went straight to main wearing A long driving torpedo punt kick. Towards Harford, here's a chance for Phil Scott. A touch of the fumbles, but it's allowed Pike in to hook it back, and it's another one to the Eagles. Kicked by Langdon and Pike after they trailed at one stage by 54 points. Gary Hocking has kicked two goals this quarter, but he doesn't get his hands on it before Maine Waring can go long. Lobs it inside 50. Malaxos again with Mark Boss. Malaxos trying to get it out. It's taken away by Stephen Hocking. Up to midfield. Russell went for the knock-on and goes down pretty heavily. Their best player so far. Couch gets into the back of an opponent. Here is Brennan. And umpire John Russo will bounce it still inside the centre square. And Russell looking very proppy at the moment. And a great deal of pain, it would appear. You wouldn't want to lose him. Keane to a near. Bearstow gives chase. It's a nice bump out by Langdon. On the crab now, is that in the back? It was, says the umpire. Carl Langdon has to give up the football. And gets 50 metres for his trouble for not giving it back quickly enough. Well, you'd think you'd learn the lesson, wouldn't you? I just uh, can't believe some players sometimes. Well, it's obvious the umpires are going to be red hot on it right from the start. There's no way known you can ever change the umpires decision. If you watched the Moorabbin game yesterday, you would agree with that comment. Carl Langdon having plenty to say, but that won't reverse the umpire's decision at all. Now Austin McCrabb suddenly finds himself with a shot at goal. Let's see how the defender kicks at the big sticks. He's off target. Plenty of Eagles jumpers there. Dean Turner gets it out to Rance. Who's chips it in short. Malaxos, is he off? Yes, says the umpire. He has to get rid of it quickly subsequently. Fires out a pass and the mark taken by Warsfold. Good play by the Eagles. Now they should go straight down the ground because Mainwaring's loose. He should go straight for home and he does. With a long kick towards full forward. Scott at the back, a good, strong mark. It was a good, strong mark because Michael Schultz has been very effective on Phil Scott so far. In fact, I think you might find that uh, it's Phil Scott's first kick. Well, he's directly in front, and this is a much better play by the Eagles. All of a sudden, they're back in it. This could be their fifth coming up. And boy, do they need it. There's the kick. He stabs, and I think he's put it through. Yes, he has. 54. Can the Eagles come back even further? Troy. 
Main wearing starting to come into his own in the last few minutes. In fact, the Eagles have kicked the last three goals to get themselves right back into this match. Although they still trail by 36. It's a fair lead. It's some high scoring here today. Burke. Could he have marked that? Bearstow. Russell. Lobs it high. Brownless in front. And Nia takes the crumbs well. Thought about going across goal. Couldn't see too many. Eagles jumpers on the move. Laurie Keane doesn't miss too many of those. Might get a free kick anyway against Burke. Keane getting in front. Tries to unload with one of those spiral punts that he's famous for. Yates goes the spoil. Does it well. Denham. Ablett. Well, collides with Troy, and that makes the opening for Pike again. On to Main Wearing. Here's more danger for the Cats. Main Wearing. Will the Eagles get the last four goals? He's missed, I fancy. One behind. Golden rule in football there is the player is running through with the ball. You must always let him have the passage. And Darren Troy there got right in the way of Gary Ablett. And it only cost him a goal. 11 and a half minutes left in the second quarter. The ball standing up just a little bit into the breeze. Pike on the bottom. Goes to the tap out. Tries to find Langdon. Who's well caught. So it tells O'Connell. McCrabb. Bairstow inside the square. Goes out wide with the kick. Plenty of open spaces out there. Turner picks it up well. Shepherded by Rance and gets the Eagles out of danger. A lot of height in the kick. And speaking of height, plenty of Eagles going up high. And the grab is taken for them by Scott. Well, they've got two options here. And he's found one of them. Good play by O'Connell to duck back. And uh, a lovely pass by Scott. There's also good talking from Carl Langdon, who also had the opportunity to go for that mark. But often that can happen that both players then go for it uh, and both miss it well an amazing change has come over this game Geelong were careering away and all of a sudden the Eagles Ross right back in it it's called sleepy hollow Peter have they gone to sleep well if he kicks this they'll only be four goals five down and that's certainly not insurmountable oh he's hooked it badly never really looked like it and he's put it through for a point well, that breeze really is going from right to left and players should realize that and allow for that five for the difference Remember, so, it was 54 points. Well, it's now 34, and another couple of quick goals, and we'll really have a red-hot second half. Now, Mark Voss is bringing it straight down the centre. O'Connell at the back and worst fold. Punched away. Malaxos, a touch of the fumbles. Oh, lovely hand pass to Scott. That was from Turley. Here's a chance. Sumik going back against Boss. It's a loose ball. In they go after it. And uh, holding the man against Sumik. It'll go to Mark Boss. Very effective in the clinches, Mark Boss. Deceptively strong. As he's just displayed there against Peter Sumich. 10-8 to 5-4. And the Cats effectively doubling the Eagles' score. And the boys from the West fighting back well. They've got a trip on Denham. Back and forward, according to the umpires. It's out of bounds, and it will be thrown in. Left half-forward flank. The West Coast Eagles coming up to the half-time break. The Cats started well in this term. The Eagles playing the better at the moment. Before this excellent crowd, Geelong's first home game for the year. It will be a free kick. Damien Burke back into the side today. After receiving badly injured ribs in the final of the Panasonic Cup. Kicked into the man on the mark. Touched off the boot. A play on core. Might have been against Scott. Could have been taken <coughs> by Laidley. Pardon me, but it wasn't Brennan. And that's dropping the ball. Bearstow to take the free kick. Bearstone just wide at the centre circle on a lead as Brownless again got his hands to it. Morgan rose it well. He kicked three in the first quarter and knocked through by Guy McKenna. Reported by his namesake up here. One oh, behind. That was beautiful play, Ross. Oh, it was by both players. Uh, Morgan very well read off the pack and then McKenna to punch it through under that uh, under those conditions. Anir. Scott stands the mark. Kick drop short. In front is Pike, Turley, Laidley on left centre wing. Well shepherded. Goes long with the kick. The target at the back might have been Langdon. Gutsy mark taken by Darren Troy. I bet Langdon could have marked that. He should have run straight at that. He could have really unloaded. Troy is the kick. Oh, that's a free kick to Scott. I would think, yes. It'll have to come back. Phil Scott was grabbed by Damien Burke. He's given them a bit of life, hasn't he, Peter? He really has. And we had to pick up his game. Oh, he set it up for Troy to punch it away. But Pike's there. Dives on it against Bearstow. He tries to get it out, Pike. 
In goes uh, Payne Wearing, or was it a near, was it? Might have been Johnny and hit the two lookalikes. In they go after it. John, it is a near there now. Gee, it looks like Pike. Alexis is there to lend a hand. And uh, number one and number two. Don Pike, Johnny Anir. Both got the same attitude for the ball too, haven't they? Same hairdos. And uh, two very good players. It's a halfway between centre wing and half forward. O'Connell cleverly gets it down to worst fold. Off the side of the boot towards the pocket. Big Laurie Keane charges after it. He's unloaded. Oh, well done by Keane as he ducks it back to Turley. Turley has it smothered by Couch. Back it is with Boss. Boss has put it out on the full. So they're under a bit of pressure now, Ross, the Cats. Yes, they've uh, just dropped off a bit, but that's been credit to the Eagles for fighting back. Malcolm Blight might have a few worries. He would be concerned with the trend anyway, not the scoreboard. And this isn't, I was going to say, it's near, it's Pike. He's been an excellent player for them so far. And the same adjective might describe that kick because it is pretty close to a goal and raced through. Now it's out of bounds. Uh, it's wide of the behind post. Oh, don't tell me that wasn't deliberate no. after the one earlier. Yeah. Boundary throw in. Left forward pocket for the West Coast Eagles. In the latter half of the second term. Couch snares it from the top of the pack. Lobs it up towards midfield. The target was Damien Burke. Turley breaks out with the ball. A long hand pass in the direction of Anir. Straight down the ground. Adlett in front. In the back surely. And that will be paid by John Russo. Yeah. Well, for mine, that's play on. Yeah, bad Wouldn't use it? of the ball too, wasn't it? Oh. One of John Anir's big problems. Yes, he, he could certainly be more effective with his disposal. Ablett. I think from memory, kicked the Cats' last goal. He certainly kicked a ripper in this quarter. They need a few more, though. Stoneham, haven't seen much of him so far. He's been very quiet, but not so Russell, who got that kick. Guy McKenna is a good player always for the Eagles. Knock up getting kicks. And here's Anir. Now towards centre wing. And that didn't help their cause that much. Well, without being critical, I think uh, Guy McKetta could have just steadied and gone back through the centre with a kick himself. As it's turned out, the ball's now out of bounds on the wing. Now, who can get it out of here? Burke, up behind, down to Turley. Underneath it is Langdon, who leaves it for his mate, and that was well called because the mark has been taken for the Eagles by O'Connell. Oh. Malaxos, Troy. Uh, Hocking rather, gives it to his brother. That's Stephen Hocking from Gary Hocking. And speaking of Gary, is Gary Ablett, who can kick the ball long. Ablett's kick up to the 50 metre mark. Brownless was the flyer. Russell rode beautifully. He's hip and shouldered out of the way. Here's a chance for the Eagles. A long hand pass by Ransford. There's two cats there. Billy Brownless from the boundary line straightens up. Can't bring it back enough. He's put it through for one behind. But Murray Rance is under enormous pressure there. Yeah, there's not many alternatives, and he elected to go to the boundary line, but it's such a big round, it's a huge handball to make it from where he was there. Well, Lockyer, I think, has done a fine job on Brownless. He's har harassed him, punched it away, put him under pressure, and it's not his fault because that ball has been belted down there time and time again. A bad oh. kick by Lockyer was mid for McKenna. Uh, over the back is worse fold. Gives it to Scott. Scott wide. Turley's come into the game. And the last uh, 10 minutes. Lovely little pass, O'Connell. Oh, top one in the back from two Geelong players. Now they're paying the advantage. There's a loose man. Pike has gone to Hart. Hart from directly in front. Oh, that is a shocking kick, Ross. Well, for a player, the caliber of kick that David Hart is, and as a rover, and a goal scoring opportunist, that should have been a goal. Four and a half minutes left in the half. And the Cats have. Uh, had their covers lowered in the last 10 minutes, certainly. Pike looks for Mainwaring on the run. 35 metres out, tackled by Troy. Ball scores free. Sumich. Oh, he's going to play 50 metres, too. Oh, yeah. He, I don't think Sumich... Well, Sumich, I think, did the right thing by playing on, because, I mean, he, he can't just he stop did. every time and wait for the whistle. I didn't even hear it, I must admit. Well, I mean, Sumich wouldn't have known that was a That's free exactly kick, I right. wouldn't think. I think the umpires have got to use a little bit of common sense at times on this rule. Yes, I think that's the best way to sum it up. Troy. It's a long looking for a steady goal. And Brownless got one on the back of the head as he took the mark. But he hasn't taken too many grabs today. He has kicked a couple of goals. One in the first quarter was a gem from the boundary line. On a lead is Morgan, who's their most prolific goal kicker. He has three. 
and all of those were kicked in the opening term. Including a magnificent snapshot from the right half forward flank. Now Darren Morgan right on 50 into the breeze. Oh, it would have been a magnificent grab of Stoneham and brought it down. Rance fumbles at the crucial moment. He'll be able to get out of this. Gets offloaded. There is a whistle on play, but the umpire has decided to pay the advantage rule. Turner up to centre wing. Ablett late on the scene. Good spoil by the Geelong star. <laughs> it's out of bounds. You see the idol of the crowd, Pete? Just a little. And Gary Ablett able to play from behind there, but to pick up David O'Connell, his great pace. He almost could have marked that, Peter, perhaps. I'm sure he could have. Boundary throw in. And there was a, a trip and a throw. A couple let go there. Pike goes through. Hocking again. Went without the ball. Malaxos gets offloaded for his trouble. A high tackle, according to umpire John Russo. He'll take the free kick short of left centre wing. Steve Malaxos has played well. There's the kick. Oh, it's a good pass too. Good lead. For Sumic. Made the mark. It's Sumic yeah. or Sumic, Russ? Sumic. Sumic. From uh, 60 metres, he'll have to kick it now. He should go with the long bomb here. He doesn't quite get onto it. It's a chance for a mark, though, to Keane. Directly in front. Broke the tackle of Schultz. And this should be a goal coming up for the Eagles. Well, Schultz actually fell over, Peter, didn't he? A bit of jostling just before that. I think uh, forced him into falling over. But there's a kick from Keane from directly in front. And he has put it through. Mark of this quarter, Geelong led by 54 points. They've had the deficit reduced to only 30. I say only 30, it's a fair lead, but the way the Eagles are playing, it won't be 30 for much longer. Troy comes out with the ball, but it's an Eagles free kick. Yeah, another one would be handy here, wouldn't it? And it'd make it a real game, wouldn't it? Worsfold has the free. Oh. Low trajectory kick. Oh, for Laxos, we'll put it down as a perfect pass. <laughs> yeah, so Johnny Worsfold giving his... Uh, Stationary foot caught in some of that mud in the centre. Steve Malaxos. He would have stint with Hawthorne. And a very successful one. Keane and Schultz. Oh. That was deliberate out of bounds, was it not? Could have been a free well, kick to Keane. Could have been man. holding the man to Keane. Yes, part of the, uh, the Gaifer Dunstall so, uh, oh. Dunstall syndrome there. Arms locked. Now they unlock. Schultz and Keane. Scott. That's a beautiful snapshot over the shoulder by Hart. Didn't quite get the desired result, only one behind. And Geelong will certainly have to lift if they're to maintain their advantage. The Eagles have answered the challenge. Now for the Cats' turn. As I said, that wind freshening a little. I don't think we'll get any rain. The clouds are pretty high, but it's uh, fairly cool now. Warsfold at the back, McCrabb. The two number threes, Main Waring and Bearstow. Warsfold there for backup support. Comes out with the ball, hustles it onto Scott. There's a good kick of the football into the goal square. It goes, oh. and it just hit the post. So the Eagles peppering the goals at the moment, and they're certainly coming right back. 42 to 70. 10 10 plays 6 6, and less than a minute to go. Well, in fact, uh, half a minute of football left, and they can really do with a goal before half time. And they've got a chance here because it's a loose ball with O'Connell if he can pick it up. Well, he just got it. Now he's trying to centre it. A shocking kick by O'Connell, but he's grabbed round the neck as it's got to come back. Now, if the umpires yes. are consistent, that should be 50. Quite right. Now, they gave it against Sumich a moment ago. Should be 50 now anyway. Should have been, well, it could have been reversed. Really. It could have been, yeah, as well. We won't go any further on that. Well, they've got 20 seconds of play left in this quarter. And that was exactly what happened before. There's the kick. Now, Keane in front was held. Over the back is Boss, and he takes it over the line. And I think time will run out because it's ticking down to six seconds now. Boundary throw in with the siren imminent. With a good comeback by the West Coast Eagles as the siren ends hostilities in the first half. With Geelong leading 10 goals, 10, 70. They got their five goals in this quarter in the early part. I think in the first 15 minutes you'll find. And the West Coast Eagles, 6-6, 42. But in that quarter, they did lead by 54 points midway through the turn. So anybody's game, really. 
the Eagles, I thought, well, they're going to be in for a long afternoon, Peter, but they came back well, didn't well, they? Well, they had plenty of chances there in that last five minutes to kick even a couple more, but uh, at least they, their endeavour was better, Ross, and uh, they, with Scott going onto the ball and Keane down there, they looked a better side. Yeah, they did, actually, and Phil Scott working a bit harder and more effectively around the ground than what Laurie Keane was doing, and, in fact, breaking even with, even with Darry, uh, Damien Burke in the ruck duels, and then Laurie Keane giving them a focal point. I just thought they tried to kick the ball too high, rather than spotting a few other players in their forward line as they went forward, and they lost the advantage. At half-time, the difference is 28 points in favour of Geelong.